Hi, in this video I'll be demonstrating how to install this CBI timer switch. Now in this case I've dropped the earth leakage. Ideally, if you can, try and switch off the upstream DB board or the upstream supply. Just remember that even though the earth leakage is down, if I take a measurement here on the incoming feed, notice there is a voltage of 230 volts sitting over there. So please be very careful when doing this installation. Now I've already installed the timer and I'm going to quickly walk you through the installation. This timer can be installed on a Samart rail or a DIN rail. In this case, I'm going to be installing it on a DIN rail. The first thing I need to do is remove this cover. This cover is the sizing for the Samart rail circuit breakers. Since it's going to be on a DIN rail, I just need to remove this black casing. All I do is insert my screwdriver over there and then peel it off. Now having a look at the timer, on the top left it says live and on the top right it says neutral. Notice there are the terminals for your live and your neutral. At the bottom there's only one terminal and this is the output going to your load. And there it says load, alpha load. Notice that there are only three terminals for this timer. I'm now going to show you the wiring layout for this timer. The neutral must be connected to the neutral rail in your DB board. Your DB board may be a little bit different. You probably have a neutral rail that looks like that or looks like that. Make sure your neutral is connected to your neutral rail. The next thing is the live. In this circuit I'm connecting my timer after this circuit breaker. This happens to be a 10 amp circuit breaker. I could use a 20 amp circuit breaker for this timer because this timer says it can handle a 21 amp resistive load. Keep in mind that the type of load dictates the specification of this timer. If you are going to be using a motor load, for example an inductive load, you are limited to just 10 amps. If you are going to be using a heating element, for example a boiler or geyser, you are limited to 21 amps. This means that you can connect this timer after a 20 amp circuit breaker. In this layout I've connected it after a 10 amp circuit breaker because I'm just using it for a light circuit. The lighting circuit is running with 1.5 millimeter cable. The cable is 1.5 millimeter because it is connected to a 10 amp circuit breaker. If you are going to be using this with the maximum of 20 amps, it's important that you use a cable that is at least 2.5 millimeter squared thickness. In this lab we are just using flexible cables because we can reuse them. I apologize for the layout and it's not that neat. Now the output of the circuit breaker which would normally have gone to the light is now going to the timer switch over there and the output of the timer is now connected to my light circuit. This is the wire that is now going to a light circuit which I'll show you shortly. If I was not using this timer switch, I would have connected the lighting circuit directly to the output of that circuit breaker. But because I'm putting a timer switch before the light, I'm now going from the circuit breaker round into the timer switch and the output of the timer switch is now going into my lighting circuit. Now note the neutral for that light circuit is still connected over here. I did not change the neutral wire for that light circuit. So here is the neutral wire for that light circuit. All I did is I used an additional neutral wire for my timer. The reason for that is the timer does need a little bit of energy in order to work and it's getting it from the live and the neutral. If I lift my earth leakage, and please be very careful here, I'm just showing it in my lab here, but in your case you should now close the cover. Notice that when I lift the lighting circuit circuit breaker, the timer switch has now come online. It will need to be configured and then I will be able to use it for a timer for my light. Now if you'd like to see how to configure the timer, please check out my playlist on electrical videos. The video for how to set the timing is there. Now what I'm going to quickly show is the bypass option. That allows me to force the timer on or off and I'm now going to turn the timer on manually. Notice the light in the far right hand side of the video. I have now used the timer to control the light rather than a regular switch. If I'd like to switch the bypass off, it is now off. You can now set the timing sequence to control your light, your pool pump or your geyser. So in summary, from the output of the circuit breaker I go round into the timer, 
From the output of the timer, I go to my load. This happened to be a light. The neutral wire of the load is still connected here at the, the neutral bus bar. I then added an additional neutral to my timer. There it goes into that same bus bar. Over here, I've got a little diagram. And that is how you wire the CBI timer into your Denrel DB board. Thanks for watching and cheers.